This is the largest encaustic painting I've ever done, and it took me months. So this video is very condensed. There is a lot that I did not film. It was also when I was in the process of rebuilding my studio. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely a very different video than I normally post. The basic composition of this piece is five circles, one in each corner and then one in the middle. The white is spackle or like drywall compound and the the dark brown is uh, tar that I've put within those circles to add texture and to kind of create different effects. So this this piece, this part of the piece right here, I kind of lumped the drywall compound and then I sanded it down to kind of get those flat tops. And as I was sanding it, I, I wanted to share this with you guys because it was really cool. As I was sanding it, you know, you, you get a lot of dust and I didn't want it to go away. I didn't want to blow it off or anything. I thought it added really cool texture. So I spritzed it with some water a few times and let it dry with between each time and then added the wax over it. And it really added to the texture of that part. Now, these are little mini circles that I added actually on the edges in between the bigger circles. And within these, I did my incised line bubbles that I have several videos of me doing this technique in, in, on different pieces. If you're interested, I can pop those into the description. Uh, but I did those within the circle. And then this is adding, I'm adding tar kind of into the cracks. And it... I love the way the brown, it adds kind of a grittiness. There's a grittiness to the tar and as well as it kind of goes into all of the crevices, this brown, it kind of weathers it. It makes it look a little more vintage, a little more, uh, uh, yeah, weathered, I guess is a good way to describe it. It was a perfect accent because the white was looking just a little too white. It was pretty hard to do the incised lines over the texture that I added, like the tar and the and the spackle, um, because the wax is not very thick in those places. I, I, I put enough to soak into the plaster and into the tar, uh, but not enough to really get like a waxy like buildup on top. So carving was, was pretty difficult, but I managed it in the end. Now this center, I really wanted to create kind of a, a target look, like, like a bullseye, or to really kind of draw your eye to the center of the piece. Because this piece, of, I've titled it Vision. It's all about, you know, kind of aiming, aiming at something and hitting your target is kind of the idea I was exploring here. And I did kind of a, a mix of colors in the middle and I really like how it, it worked out, but, but again, I wanted to add these lines. So what I did is I, I carved the lines with my compass and then uh, every other one I filled with color and like what you're seeing now. And the rest of the, the circles, I, I left that um, mi mix of colors.
Now this, um, adding the wax this way, uh, I realized was not the best way. I have a stylus tool that I began using a little bit later and I was able to clean the lines up a little bit so they look a lot sharper. I'm not so worried about fusing and getting wax, like spreading wax outside of the circles and everything. I'm able to keep it really tight and really clean. And the stylus was so much easier than, than using like these brushes and, and wire brushes and trying to kind of fuse it really gently. Like the, it's just a lot more difficult than it needs to be. And using my stylus tool, you it, it's a heat tool. So it fuses as you go and it has a pointed tip. So you can, you can really get those details and really kind of blend the colors without having to worry about the wax just spreading everywhere. The stylus is also great for adding these little details. I was trying to go for kind of flames, um, you know, the red and the orange and the yellow really kind of evokes, and even the purple, just the heat, heat and a licking flames. I kind of wanted to kind of spread the wax out a little bit of the of the main center circle. And the stylus, the stylus tool kind of allowed me to add some details to that to, to kind of make it a little more interesting. You can see the difference. I can get all the way up to the edges with the stylus and really make those circles pop. And it blends the colors really well together too because I've got multiple colors in each of these rings and I'm trying to kind of blend them together a little bit, which is it's really hard to do when you're just using the heat tool and you don't want the colors to spread. You want to keep them contained, but with the stylus, it's just so much easier. There's a lot of tiny details in this piece that I, that I worked for a long time on, um, the different colors and how they blend together. I added little oil paint highlights to some of the places, some of the tar you can see little portions of the tar kind of white. Um, I added some colors of oil paint to kind of highlight some of the texture. I removed wax from certain places and added more to other places and, and really had to take care with a lot of different sections at a time. So it was, it's definitely uh, different working with a large piece versus working on a small piece. And there's the finished piece. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you in the next video. I want to take a minute to shout out to my members. Thank you so much for being a part of my channel and helping to support my work. It is so much appreciated. The Tinkerer's Wife, Andy Dees, and Sue Rowe have been members for a long time, and it's just been so great to have their support. Thank you so much. Per Id. I do not think I'm pronouncing that right, so I apologize, but very grateful for your support too. Susie Jelinek, Cindy Griffiths, Carrie Greer, Yasmin Kaminiti, 
Uh, if I mispronounced any of those, I apologize. But thank you so much for your support, too. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope you'll stick around. Patrice Kubler, Barbara Robinson, Anna Marie Ramirez, Jimena Rincon, and Jacqueline Wooten. Thank you so much for being a part of the channel. I'm really happy that you're here. And I hope you'll stick around and see uh, what else I have to offer. I welcome any of your feedback, too. So looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much.